I'm now with uh, Bruce Jenkins, who's a managing consultant with Fortify. Um, Bruce, please, could you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, as you indicated, my name is Bruce Jenkins. I'm managing consultant with Fortify Software. Joined the company in 2007 after I spent 28 long, good years in the U.S. Air Force. Just prior to joining Fortify, I got involved in application security, and since joining the company, I've been spending my time working with customers, various companies, to try to understand the application and software security space, what the requirements are for trying to implement an application security program, and ensure that code that these companies developed to develop products for their customers is secure. Now, just before uh, we started interviewing and recording, uh, Bruce was telling me something very interesting about uh, his original online banking, and I, I was saying, surely the code that, that banks use for connecting to your bank accounts would be tested and protected and secure. And yes. uh, Bruce had some interesting insights on that. Well, the comment I made is that we certainly hope it is secure. But what I have found, uh, both through personal use of various applications and uh, anecdotal evidence from others is that these applications are not always as secure as we think they might be or that we think they should be. Uh, as an example, I have used an online banking system that for me to harvest or to recover my user ID or password, I would enter some sort of personal identifying information to do that password reset. We know that we can harvest personally identifiable information virtually anywhere. I probably can go to uh, the rubbish can out back and find a piece of paper with someone's information on it, name, perhaps a, a date of birth, maybe an address or a telephone number, and then I might be able to use that to obtain other information. I can go online and uh, spend $29.95, right? US dollars or 20 pounds, and I can buy that information. Sure, I, I think then, it's 10 pounds in the UK. Is it 10 pounds in the UK? <laughs> okay, you're getting a, a discount, <laughs> right? So. so, but the point is, um, we don't always think through the misuse cases um, that might be applied to our, our products that we deploy in support of our customers. And therefore, we end up in a situation where we're trying to react then to a compromise of some sort by uh, trying to tell our customers, provide, give them some assurance that their data are protected, or we're reacting legally, trying to defend ourselves against lawsuits. Uh, and we are then also trying to revamp our, our IT systems to prevent what had happened from happening in the future, hopefully uh, at the very basic level, to try to come up with some misuse cases that might be used in the future. It's not a good thing to use personally identifiable information to access an IT system. We know that these days because people use that information to gain access and to do compromise. So, so we have to think of other mechanisms yeah. that we can use. And, and, and what other mechanisms are, well, are they uh, coming up with today? Sure. Two-factor authentication is one. Yeah. So I might use a, a user ID and a password in combination with some sort of a, a fob uh, that provides uh, a random number, right, that's synchronized with the server somewhere, and I add that information to my password. Another might be a smart card mechanism, which are becoming more widely used today. Um, so it's something physical that I have that I can use in conjunction with something I know, like a personal, uh, personal identification yeah. number. Uh, so two-factor authentication uh, is, is used heavily today. Uh, challenge response questions, right? So maybe you typically access your brokerage account from your home computer and now you're uh, at a cafe somewhere uh, using the internet and uh, they identify the fact that you're at a different IP so now to verify who you are you might be challenged with some questions that sh theoretically only you know the, the answers to. But um, that's still secret though. It's, that's still personal. It's in, well it's you know mother's maiden name and yeah <laughs> so yeah I have a, I have a lot of heartburn when I see those types of challenge questions yeah. like mother's maiden name yeah. or father's maiden name. However perhaps your second dog's middle name might not be so well known, and therefore that is probably a more appropriate question oh, okay. than something that could be obtained from a hospital somewhere in public records. So the idea is to use challenge response systems that uh, are more geared towards something that definitely you only know and not others. And, and some systems allow you to create your own questions. Bruce, thank you very much for your time. Certainly, you're welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Chai. I'm the editor for securityvibes.com. If you've enjoyed this video 
or have any other comments to make, please do fill in the comment boxes and let us know what you think. Thank you.